Absolutely honest. That's right. 45. <laughs> yes, well, there's no need to be that honest. I normally pass for early 30s. Yeah, in a darkened room with your back to the window. But not in the harsh light of day, Archie. Let's face it, you've aged. I know. These last weeks have certainly etched in a few more lines, Roy. I mean, look at the suffering in that face. It's a tragedy. Oh, never mind, Archie. You may have aged, but you still kept your looks. Do you think so? Yeah, a little worn round the edges, but you still retain that sort of male beauty that can set the pulses racing. <laughs> Rayer, a little less air, perhaps. A little less hair? My God, is it beginning to show? Well, there were three more strands in the comb this morning. Oh, it's so fine, <laughs> such a silky texture. <laughs> Do you have anything I can use to keep it in, Figures? I've got a cigarette box. <laughs> I'm talking about a remedy. After all, you're supposed to be the medical expert round here. Well, there is one method that's quite effective. Stand on your head for half an hour each day. It gets the blood to the follicles. It feeds the roots of the hair. Mind you, it gives you a terrible headache. <laughs> if I can hardly stand on my feet and you expect me to stand on my head. Still, I shall have to do something. Women won't look at a man with a receding hairline. They say bee stings can be very effective. Bee stings? Yes, clinic. Well, how do they get the bees to sting you? Tap the eye and shove your head in it? Or are they trained to dive bomb you one by one? Of course not. They probably put one in a bottle, shake it up until it gets angry and stick it on your head. <laughs> Sounds a bit drastic to me. Actually, there's only one sure way to ensure a complete head of hair, medically speaking. What's that? Castration. <laughs> Still, I suppose that defeats the object of the exercise in your case. It's not funny, figures. Oh, what's all this about, Archie? Some bird turned you down again. Is that what it's all about? No, of course not. It's just that uh, I, I, I want to put in for this job, uh, and the age limit is 35. Do you think I'll get away with it? Well, I don't see why not, as long as it doesn't involve humping things about. Humping things about? <laughs> I'm a senior executive. I don't hump things about, figures. No, this is a... High-powered executive position. Not that they're going to be very impressed with a letter written from a hospital bed. You never know. They might be impressed by your courage, your natural resilience, your Dunkirk spirit. It's a pity you look as sick as a dog. <laughs> I know. I wish I felt better. I haven't felt really well for years. Age is a terrible thing, you know. I have a job getting my breath these days. Uh, you're not the only one, Archie. The trouble is we're burned out. I only have to run upstairs and I'm breathless. That's another thing that defeats the object of the exercise. <laughs> you know what's happened, don't you? The lungs have gone, and do you know why? Pollution. Too much lead in the atmosphere. It's all this, it's all this petrol consumption. Every time I drive that lorry down the road, I can see the trees wilt. It's damage in the atmosphere. That and underarm sprays. We <laughs> should do something about it. We should join friends of the earth, Archie, before we end up in it. Yes, well, before the world finally disintegrates, forget, because do you mind if I get a decent job? Well, no, no, you put in for it. Uh, Norman, would what, what, you like a cigarette? Oh, thanks. Now then, I want you to tell me something. I want you to be absolutely honest. How old am I? Why, can't you remember? <laughs> I mean, uh, how old do I look? Oh, uh, I'm not very good at guessing ages, Archie. Oh, come on, have a go. I won't be offended. <laughs> um, 48? <laughs> no, you're not very good, are you? In fact, you're bloody awful. What's <laughs> wrong with you? Well, you may not believe this, Roy, but before I came in here, I'd never smoked a cigarette. Mother never approved. Yeah, well, I sort of guessed that. You see, the thing is, you don't burn evenly. You'll never do any good unless you burn evenly, and you don't take it down. You can't enjoy a good cigarette unless you take it down. I think I shall get a gold <laughs> cigarette case, paper thin, and a lighter to match. I think that looks very sophisticated. There's more to smoking than a gold cigarette case. The way you smoke a cigarette can be very revealing. In what way? Well, there's smoking it behind the back of the hand. That's reminiscent of the prison yard. There's holding it in the fingers, poofed to style. Or there's flicking it about in a nervous and agitated manner. Or simply letting it droop from the lower lip. 
You normally get that in food shops. Now, <laughs> the way a cigarette is smoked can tell us a great deal about the person behind it. Oh, uh, Mr. Thorpe. Just a minute, Gupta. Did I hear a voice? Do I detect a sign of life behind this smoke laden haze? Could I have a word, Doctor? Good heavens, as Glover. Is all that smoke emanating from you, or is the bed on fire? Listen. <laughs> this is serious. I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to be absolutely honest. How old do you think I look? It's very difficult to say, Clover. I can barely see you. But don't worry, you won't be looking much older, not with all this smoking. Gupta, are you doing anything about this smoking? Yes, Mr. Thorpe. Good. I'm sending out for more ashtrays. <laughs> more ashtrays? Gupta, this is a hospital, not a first-class smoker. We're trying to make them well, not finish them off. <laughs> Must have lungs like parchment. Shall I open a window? Yes, but do it slowly. We're in a smokeless zone. <laughs> Good Lord, even Norman smoking. Norman, what on earth do you think you're doing? Smoking a cigarette. Norman, please don't start this disgusting habit. You may think that adult has got a certain glamour, but I can assure you, this is a noxious weed that can lead to lung cancer, breathing problems, thrombosis, and an early death. Could have only had three. Yes, Mr. Norman. See this? Cigarettes can seriously damage your health. Says can, it doesn't say they will. What do you want, a guarantee? <laughs> well, some people seem to stay healthy enough. Look, Norman, don't be taken in by these adverts. You may have seen that photograph of the lean, bronzed cowboy smoking a cigarette, gazing into the wide blue yonder, but I can assure you, if he carried on like that, there shouldn't be an empty saddle near corral. <laughs> That's not going to happen to me, Doctor. I don't take it down. I just sort of blow it around. <laughs> you don't have to take it down, Norman. You're inhaling 40 a day, sitting next to figures. Well, just, just a minute, Doctor. It's still a free country, and after all, it does depend on your own personal metabolism. I've smoked 40 cigarettes a day for years, and it's never done me any harm. In fact, up until last year, I always won the works cross-country race. Yes, yeah, so what happened last year? I think it's beginning to slow down, eh? Wow. Well, Alf Parsons won it, didn't he? Yes, and dare I go out on a limb and suggest that Alf Parsons doesn't smoke 40 cigarettes a day. That's true, he smokes 50 and supplements it with a pipe. <laughs> I didn't say there weren't exceptions. Alf Parsons is certainly an exception. He's the life and soul of the loading bay. Always laughing, his smile wreathed in smoke, ash all down his front. He's a real live wire. Well, that's all very well, Tickers, but you won't be laughing. None of you will. Not with all the freezing and coughing that's coming from this ward. Forty-nine, Glover. <laughs> I don't think he meant that, do I just tried to frighten you. Is it really that dangerous? Everything has its risks, Norman. I see our managing director's been struck by a fly in champagne cork. <laughs> could lose his eye over it. What are you reading? Big That's works journal, isn't it? I'm looking to see if I get a mention. Oh, yes, here am I. Best wishes to Roy Figures, popular driver of the export sales section. Get well soon, Roy. We miss your smiling face. Packing a 200 on the way. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's nice if you've got a job. Well, I told you put in for it. Hello, there's a bit about Al Parsons here. I wonder what he's been up to. He's a lad, he's out. <laughs> Suddenly at home, age 22. <laughs> no flowers by request. All donations to the Amateur Athletic Association. <laughs> What are you doing, Fig? Nothing. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> That's not that funny. You've got no wind up, Fig. They've frightened you. Of course I'm frightened. You didn't know Alf Parsons. I thought he was indestructible. Apparently, he was helping his brother move a piano. He stopped on the stairs to catch his breath, said to his brother, flash the ash and drop down dead. <laughs> Those were his last words, flash the ash. He never learned. Well, I'm going to cut it down from now on. That's why I've got the pipe. You should see what I'm finding in the filter. That used to go into my lungs, mate. You give it up, Norman, before it's too late. But I don't want to give it up, Fig. It's the first dangerous thing I've done in my life. <laughs> I was never allowed to smoke at home. I've never been one of the lads. I've never said, flash the ash, or stuck a match with my fingernail, or shared a cigarette with a girl. Shared a cigarette with a girl? You think it's a very sex symbol? You think you're Humphrey Bleeding Bogart? No, I don't. <laughs> I've had a reply about that job. They're coming to interview me on Thursday. Uh, and you're right, Figgis. They were impressed that I wrote from hospital. They said that they admired my honesty. The only trouble is I told them I was 35. Oh, well, they won't admire your honesty for long. You wouldn't pass for 35 with a bag over your head. <laughs> Doctor, 
Gopta, uh, I want to ask you something, and I want you to be absolutely honest with me. No, no, please do not ask me, my dear Glove. I do not wish to be involved. Well, there's a prize, Gupta, like guessing the weight of the cake. No, now, please. Come on, don't be afraid. How old do you think I look? Now, it won't offend me. Well, in that case, I think you are very youthful, well-preserved, 50. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'm much younger than that. But Mr. Top is right. You should take more exercise. You're not fit. You smoke too much. Of course I smoke too much. That's because I, I live on my nerves, Doctor. I can't relax. Ah, ah, then I can help you there. I was like that once. Nervous, intense, excitable. Then I took up yoga. Yoga? Yes. Yoga teaches you to relax the mind by relaxing the body. Come, let me show you. Let me see your Dr. Lotus position. Sit there. Arms by your side. Now cross your legs. Cross. Yes. Up. Oh, careful, Doctor. I'm a sick man. That, that is the Lotus position. <laughs> Oh, what is the matter? I think you've crushed his petals. <laughs> so di difficult right after your operation. Oh, then let's try the womb position. You'll find that much easier. Uh, that is the womb position. How long do I have to stay like this? Nine months. <laughs> yeah, well, it must be with glove. Is he making a spasm? No, he's in the womb position. Womb position? <laughs> a bit big for that. Yes, it is yoga. It will encourage him to take his mind off the smoking. Oh, good idea, Gupta. Clover, uh, are you receiving, ma'am? Uh, I've just been looking at your records. If you carry on smoking at the rate you're doing, you'll soon be in the dead position. Oh. That goes for you too, Pink. What's that in your mouth? It's a pipe, Doctor. I can see that. Where's your willpower thing? You're simply giving up one filthy habit for another. No, you're wrong there, Doctor. This is much more hygienic. You see, all the nicotine is collected in the filter in the stem. It's much cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> much cleaner for who, Piggins? <laughs> I know I am, but sure I am. I make it easy, why? Yes, you take care now, Julia. Don't talk to any strange men. I'll be fine, Pop. Kiri, Julia. I'm not It's heaven, Atkins. Yes, just you, me, the Vauxhall Astra, two litre convertible, ABS brakes, plow steering, optional electric roof. I love you, Julia. Say it again. ABS brakes, plow steering, optional electric roof. I don't know who this new boyfriend of Julia's is, but at least he's got good taste. He drives one of those fine Astros. Atkins! Ah, uh, 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 a bit parky out there this morning. Still, no pain, no gain. <laughs> what you got there, then? Oat and wheat brown. It's very nice. I'm sure it is. But is it a serious cereal? <laughs> Actually, it's got two kinds of brown in it. <gasps> Hence the name. The oat bran may help reduce cholesterol as part of a low-fat diet. What's the wheat bran do then? Use your imagination. Oat and wheat bran, a great double act from Weetabix. Right. Yeah! Forbidden fragrance from Parfum Cacherel. Can a photo really be this good? Fuji Color Super G. So real, it's unreal. New Dolmio chicken casserole sauces use the best Mediterranean ingredients to bring out the best in chicken. So you can make the best tasting chicken casseroles, like our red wine and mushroom. New Dolmio chicken casserole sauces. Only the best will do. Now, are you sure you've got everything, Money? Oh, let me see. Uh, wine, camembert, chocolates. Present for the niche. <laughs> I see. Something tasteful for the top of the telly. Yep, that's a lot. I'm ever so glad you came along, Access. That's what friends are for. And everyone seems to know you. Well, I am accepted in over 200 countries. 
Um, what's wrong with Checkbook? Doesn't he like being abroad? No, he doesn't travel Ooh. well. Access. Your flexible friend. Mum deodorant is now available in a fragrance for the evening. Twilight. Not coloured. Not perfumed. Just kind. No good, Roy. I've got to have a cigarette. Willpower, Archie. Well, I can't relax. I think I've got withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> Norman, give me a cigarette. You told me not to give you one until the morning. <laughs> give me a cigarette, Norman. No, you said I wasn't to give you one, even if you asked. Norman, I want a cigarette. You said no matter how much you begged or pleaded, I wasn't to give you one. I'm not begging or pleading, I'm threatening. You said even if you threatened, I wasn't to give you one. Give me a cigarette. <laughs> There's no need to get nasty about it. <laughs> oh, figures. I had to do it, Archie. Yes. Yes, you're right, Roy. It's got to be the cold turkey treatment. That wasn't bad, Norman. Try to be a bit firmer next time. I'm not staying here. It's getting too dangerous. I think I should go and watch some television. Now, have I got everything? Lighter, cigarette case, reserve pack. Yes, that's it. I'll see you later. There he goes, complete with his junior smoking kit. Some people never learn. Well, it's clean living for me from now on. Man, it's not going to be easy. I've always smoked. I've always enjoyed the gentle fragrance of golden Virginia. Oh, shut up, Figgis. I'm irritable enough as it is, and I've got this interview tomorrow. Oh, never mind, Archie. Try some of this. What's that? Snuff. <laughs> this box could be the answer to all our problems. A drop of this up the hooter to excite the nasal membranes, and you can forget all about smoking. That is, if you can take it. <laughs> if I can take it. Of course I can take it. The ability to take snuff is the mark of a gentleman. In that case, would you care to partake of a pinch, old fruit? After you. Certainly. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'll have to see if I can get some more. I've just put one out. Hello, Norman. What are we watching tonight? Oh, it's... Uh... There's a fire. Oh, 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 sorry. Get it, Archie. I feel fine, figures. I just wish it'd stop. <laughs> 
asking me, that's all. I wouldn't have asked, only I think, thought you seemed a little short-tempered this morning. Short-tempered? I'm not short-tempered. Governor thinks you're short-tempered. Why should he think that? I think it's the way you threw your breakfast at him. <laughs> that was an accident. You've had a lot of accidents just lately, Archie. That's because you're tense and irritable. Tense and irritable? I'm not tense and irritable. <laughs> oh, well, never mind, Archie. It's going to be easier from now on. Norman's given it up. He tried smoking two cigarettes at once last night and threw up in the toilets. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with smoking. It's just that I've, I've got this interview this morning. No wonder I'm tense. Uh, Mr. Hargreaves is waiting in the day room to see you. I believe it's about the job. Well, this is it. Not that I'm worried. I mean, it's only an interview. He can't eat me. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Ah, Mr. Glover. How do you do? Good morning. Please sit down. Thank you. Now, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the board were very impressed by your application, particularly as it came from a sick bed. It shows the kind of fighting spirit the company needs. Thank you. Now, I see you give your age as 35. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you must have suffered a great deal. <laughs> now, the question is, will you be fit enough for the post we have in mind? Fit enough? Of course I'll be fit enough. I'm getting better every day. All I need is a few weeks rest and recuperation. I wouldn't have put in for the job if I didn't think I was fit enough. Good. Um, no trouble with the old nerves or anything like that? Nerves? Good heavens, no. Only you would be working under a great deal of pressure with long hours and considerable travelling. Oh, don't worry about that. I thrive on um, 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 pressure. <laughs> splendid, splendid. Uh, now, the thi uh, Oh, do you mind if I smoke? Smoke? <laughs> no, go ahead. Would you care for a cigarette? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, you're quite right. It's a filthy habit. Now... <laughs> now, the man we want must be good with people. Are you good with people, Mr. Glover? I beg your pardon? Are you good with people? Of course I'm good with people. Ask anyone. Your main responsibility will be dealing with employees and union officials. Now, do you think you could cope with that? Union officials? Don't worry, I know how to deal with them. Belly aching bunch of reds. I beg your pardon? Ruining the country, absenteeism, broken agreements, unofficial strikes. Not that they can see it. I mean, have you ever met a shop steward who wasn't as thick as two short planks? <laughs> yes, well, we were hoping for some tact and diplomacy. Tact and diplomacy? They don't understand tact and diplomacy. All they understand is force, the iron hand in the iron glove. Yes, I, I don't think you quite understand the situation. Oh, I understand, all right. And I blame management. You're all so wet and spineless, you let them walk all over you. Now, steady on, old chap. Who are you calling old chap? <laughs> I'm not old. I'm not as old as you. I bet you've got ten years on me, and I'm fitter. And you know why? Because I don't sit around smoking and asking damn silly questions. Yes, you're right. It is a filthy habit, and you should give it up. But you can't. You know why? Because you haven't got the willpower. That's the trouble with British industry today. Gutless! <laughs> No, I don't think so, Doctor. Must be me. <laughs> the threat of fire haunts me day and night, Figures. It's all this smoking. Do you know the cause of most fires? Carelessly discarded cigarette ends. I mean, look at Norman. He's already set fire to Gupta in a woman's handbag. <laughs> He's only been smoking for two days. Of course, you're very high up here. If there was a fire, you could find yourself knotting sheets. Uh, yes, Doctor. Even then, I don't think they've reached the ground. Have you ever tried hitting a safety net, Figgis? Uh, not likely, Doctor. Yeah, it's not easy. They could be picking off that terrace like strawberry jam. <laughs> because the important thing in the event of a fire is not to panic. Simply report in an orderly manner to your nearest assembly point. Oh, where's that, Doctor? It's, um... Well, how the hell should I know? <laughs> You'll have to ask someone. The trouble is people leave these things and it's too late. Have you been smoking, Figgis? Oh, haven't you, uh, Doctor? I've given it up. Good, that's a spirit. I'm glad to hear. Just cut it out completely. It's the only way. Oh, now you mentioned, Doctor, I think I can smell smoke. It must be coming up the ventilation shaft. It's probably from the canteen. Good heavens, don't tell me they've set fire to the chip pan again. Another boiled sweet, Norman. 
Norman. Can't you sleep, aren't you? No. I just don't seem to have the willpower for this sort of thing. I don't know how Figgis does it. Look at him, he's sleeping like a baby. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> he's having a quiet smoke. What? Well, well, for all the dirty tricks, and he's been lecturing me about willpower, watching me go through agonies while he's been inhaling the delicious fragrance of golden Virginia on the slide. Where is he? I think he's in the loo. What is going on? Where is Figures? You mean the Iron Man of the Surgical Ward, Doctor? He's having a crafty drag in the box. You should not be doing that. He should be in bed. Come on, let's go and find him. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes, he's in that one. Smoking. Now, you all know what to do. Yes. After all, he could start a fire. Remember your fire drill. Got stay with me before it had the chance to split. <laughs> What's going on there? What's the joke? <laughs> well, he's, he's in there. He's, he's in there. We've been doing more time. Figures. I make a big why. I make it big I know why I'm not sure I am. I make it big Yes, I make it big I make it big I know why I'm not sure I am. I make it big I make it big I know I am not sure I am. Yes, I make it big I make it big Only when I lie. Thank you,